All right, the last part of chapter six deals with uh, molecular geometry, using the Vesper theory to determine the shape of uh, a molecule. And you've heard this in biology, shape determines function, and that's very true in uh, biochemistry and chemistry as well. Shape has a lot to do with how things react, uh, how uh, later, how, can, how reactions can occur. If you can break it down into the uh, simple shapes or or the simple geometry that you're looking at of the molecule, you can determine uh, a lot of stuff, especially in organic chemistry. So let's talk about the Vesper theory, or the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. That is a big, scary acronym, but it's very, very simple. All you're doing is you're looking at electron pairs, whether they be bonding pairs or the lone pairs that you see remember bonding pairs are denoted by lines bonding pair uh, lone pairs are going to be denoted by dots right beside each other and that's going to tell you the shape or tell you a lot about the shape of a molecule uh, electron pairs orient themselves in order to minimize repulsive forces that means they're going to be as far away from each other as possible they don't want each other invading space obviously as you get more electrons the closer they're going to have to be okay for example if you just have three uh, atoms and no extra um, lone pairs, they're going to be as far away from each other as possible. Let's talk about the types of electron pairs. I alluded to this just a second ago. Uh, the first pair is a bonding pair. The, bon uh, the pairs of electrons that form bonds. These electron uh, bonding pairs are denoted by lines in our Lewis structures. The second type of pairs we have are lone pairs. And they are non-bonding electrons. They're the ones that are just stuck out there like uh, they're denoted by two dots right beside each other. Um, a rule of thumb is that lone pairs repel sh more strongly than bonding pairs. Remember bonding pairs are going to be closer together because then when you bond you decrease the radius between the two atoms because they're pulling, they're, both of them are pulling on, they're pulling closer together. Lone pairs however are not associated with a bond. They're associated with a single uh, atom. They don't have these uh, sharing going on where they're pull, being pulled from two atoms. They're alone by themselves, so they're kind of more floating out there. They take up more space, so they repel more strongly than your bonding pairs do. So what is that going to do? That's going to make them push further on the angle. So for example, if if that remember that from the first slide we had that straight uh, angle with three atoms. If you look at this one, if you add lone pairs into the mix up top, you end up with this bond angle decreasing and kind of a bent shape, or it's crunching close together because you've got a lone pair up here. Alright, so let's look at some common shapes. Alright, the first one is the linear shape. Okay. It has a bond angle of 180 degrees. This one is 180 degrees from this one, 180 degrees from this one. An example of it will be beryllium hydride. We have two pairs of electrons total, two bonding pairs, one, two, and no lone pairs. We have looked at this one uh, in the last slideshow. Another common shape is going to be the trigonal planar. This is flat. It's trigonal planar. All right, there are three bonding pairs total, one, two, three, zero lone pairs, and the bond angle in between all three of these is 120 degrees. So we've got 120 degrees between all three of these. Uh, remember, no lone pairs. An example of that would be boron trifluoride. All right, another common shape is the tetrahedral shape, the tetrahedron. Uh, we have four bonding or four electron pairs total. All four of those are bonding. One, two, three, four for a tetrahedron. Our bond angle is 109.5 degrees. So our angles here are 109.5. And an example of that will be carbon tetrachloride or carbon tet. 
Oh, I'm sorry. That's methane. That's not carbon tetrachloride. Methane, CH4. Uh, another common molecular shape is going to be a trigonal pyramidal. Trigonal tri, meaning one, two, three, uh, in sort of a pyramid shape. I'm going to show you these in 3D models in uh, the classroom. Trigonal pyramidal. We have four pairs of electrons total, three of which are bonding, one, two, three, and one lone pair. Remember, lone pairs push more than bonding pairs. So that's why we denoted as kind of a bigger uh, Mickey Mouse ear, if you will, type uh, situation where it's pushing more on them. The bond angles you see are represented are 107 degrees, and the uh, classic example is ammonia, NH3. Another common molecular shape is the bent, B-E-N-T, molecule. We have four uh, pairs of bonding electrons total are four pairs of electrons total, two of which are bonding, one, two, and two of which are lone, one, two, resting around this central atom. It kind of pushes on both ends, and it closes that uh, this bond angle up right here to give us 100 point, uh, 104.5 degrees for a bond angle. A classic example, one of our favorite molecules is, of course, water, H2O. Um, and you should remember that from the molecular shape. I'm going to show you this and how this relates to Lewis structures in class. Um, but this is just kind of an overview of the different shapes. And a trigonal, no, yeah, trigonal bipyramidal is our next one. We have five pairs of electrons, all five of which are bonding. One, two, three, four, five. Zero lone pairs, so we don't have them pushing anywhere on us. Uh, we have two bond angles here. We've got a nine degree and then we have 120 on some of them. Uh, this is typically, if you were to flip this, this way it would be a seesaw. And I'm going to show you this in uh, our modeling kit when we look at it. An example of this is phosphorus pentachloride, PCl5. And our last shape is our octahedral, or octahedron. We have six total uh, pairs of electrons, all of which are bonding, one, two, three, four, five, six. The reason we call it an octahedral is we end up with one, two, three, four sides on the bottom, four sides on the top to make an octagon, kind of see an octagon shape. Uh, all of the bond angles in between here are 90 degrees no matter how you look at it. And an example would be, an, uh, this is of course going to be an expanded octet because you have one, two, three, four, five, six things connected to a central atom. And remember our expanding octet example was sulfur uh, hexafluoride in the last example. And that is it for bonding electrons, or for molecular geometry and Vesper theory.